Starliner is not only a failure in terms of Boeing's reputation, but also a significant financial setback for the company. The spacecraft launched many years late and is currently stuck on the International Space Station. Yikes! Moreover, the project has turned into a financial disaster, with double the spending compared to its competitor SpaceX's Dragon. Truly alarming. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. When it comes to space exploration, aside from mentioning SpaceX, another topic that frequently comes up is money. Lots of it. Not too surprising given that past space engineering projects have always drained government budgets. However, to date, public perception of this issue has significantly changed, largely thanks to the groundbreaking efforts of Elon and SpaceX in cost optimization. SpaceX is not only leading the industry, but also has become a model for other companies to follow. After all, they hope that at some point, space travel will no longer just be limited to big corporations, wealthy billionaires, and government agencies, but will actually be accessible to regular Joes like you and me. However, contrary to the majority, there are still some players in the space industry who have not been able to reduce costs and have instead made them skyrocket to unacceptable levels. At the top of this list is Boeing and their space programs. Recently, Boeing announced another financial charge related to the troubled Starliner commercial crew program, raising the company's total loss on Starliner to $1.6 billion. That's with a B. In its quarterly earnings report, Boeing recorded a $125 million loss for Starliner, blaming delays in the spacecraft's ongoing crew flight test, the program's first mission to get astronauts in orbit. And that's not the first time Starliners caused financial losses for Boeing. The company incurred a $288 million loss on Starliner last year, including $257 million in the second quarter last year after the company postponed the CFT mission to this year. Since 2016, the total amount the company's lost on the project is going to reach nearly $1.6 billion, including the newly announced change July 31st. These losses are primarily due to repeated schedule delays and additional work needed to address the spacecraft's technical issues. Looking back a decade when NASA awarded Boeing a $4.2 billion contract to build Starliner, the spacecraft was initially expected to be ready to carry astronauts into space by the end of 2017. However, reality has strayed far from expectations. Now, the first crewed flight of Starliner is expected to happen June 5, 2024, nearly seven years behind the original plan. Overall, since 2010, Starliner program has cost NASA and Boeing at least $6.7 billion, according to the latest financial loss announcement. This spending includes the development of the spacecraft, tests, and the government's commitment to six manned flights using Starliner. In contrast, Crew Dragon's programs by SpaceX, though it only started carrying astronauts up into space in 2020, has a total contract value with NASA for equivalent missions that exceeds just $3.1 billion. However, because SpaceX is a private company, it's difficult to determine the exact level of their actual investment in this project. In terms of progress, SpaceX has successfully completed all six manned flights for NASA. On the other hand, Boeing is expected to take at least another year before it can start operating Starliner. Given Boeing's delays, NASA's decided to extend their contract with SpaceX, adding eight more round-trip flights to the ISS, stretching late into this decade. So, what's the reason for this big failure? Well, the excuses from Boeing's officials haven't changed compared to previous losses. They always blame the fixed-price contract structure. The company noted that the losses were part of $1 billion in charges on fixed-price programs in its Defense and Space Business unit recorded in the quarter, including work on the KC-46A tanker aircraft and the VC-25B aircraft that'll be the next Air Force One. Clearly, the results this quarter are disappointing, said Dave Calhoun, the outgoing chief executive of Boeing, on the call, referring to the losses on those fixed-price contracts. We expect the fixed-price development programs to remain bumpy till we complete the development phase and transition to mature long-term franchise programs. That's made Boeing wary about taking on future fixed-price work in that business unit. Based on the lessons we learned in taking on these fixed-price development programs, we've maintained contracting discipline for all future opportunities, he said. Boeing has not ruled out additional losses on Starliner in the future, particularly as the first operational mission, Starliner 1, gets delayed from February 2025 to no earlier than August 2025. The risk remains that we may record additional losses in future periods, the company said in an SEC filing. But the reality we see is quite different. Take a look at SpaceX. They've excelled with fixed-price contracts, which NASA uses for certain elements of Artemis, aimed at sending astronauts to the moon. 
For example, NASA selected SpaceX and Blue Origin, the space company owned by Jeff Bezos, for fixed-price contracts to develop crewed lunar landers. SpaceX also got a fixed-price contract to provide NASA with a vehicle to deorbit the ISS at the end of its lifespan. This really shows how Boeing's performance is increasingly getting worse. With the Starliner program, Boeing had begun developing spacecraft periodically since the 60s. But those who worked there in the 60s, they're no longer there. So the organization's institutional knowledge has been lost. Additionally, Boeing is considering exiting the space sector because in reality, space is not a major source of revenue for Boeing. The company earned $78 billion in total revenue last year, and it's estimated that only about 10% of that comes from spacecraft. This is the most vulnerable sector among all their business units. Boeing also recognizes the competition and growth of new rocket companies like Blue Origin and SpaceX. To be honest, for Boeing, when they consider business units that could be liquidated to generate cash, space is at the top of the list. That's why any complaints or blamed contract regulations from Boeing can be seen as an indication that they're seeking more government support. Otherwise, they might have no choice but to make their exit. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments so we can talk about it together. And make sure you like and subscribe our channel. All right, let's get back into it. Due to the company's prolonged financial losses, on July 31st, Boeing also appointed a new CEO, Robert Kelly Ortberg, who was the former CEO of supplier Rockwell Collins, will be its new CEO effective August 8th, replacing retiring Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun, who's been under fire lately for the company's problems. He's seen as a potential figure who could save Boeing from its current quagmire. It's quite curious to see how he'll handle the issues with a first crewed Starliner flight and whether the program's future will be cut short, as I speculate. Let's wait and see Ortberg's new decisions when he officially takes over this once-leading aviation giant. Regarding the status of Starliner, Boeing and NASA have both stated that the tests they conducted on Starliner's thrusters have shown some positive signs. Both teams are very happy with the results, Chloe Maring, NASA's flight director for Starliner, said in a statement. The agency also said that it had verified that the Starliner's propulsion system was stable and that helium leak rates had not increased in a way that could jeopardize a return back to Earth. The helium system is going to get checked again before the Starliner capsule undocks from the space station, according to NASA. Wilmore and Williams were seated inside the Starliner capsule during the hot fire test as part of their return preparations, NASA said. The thrusters are crucial for maneuvering the spacecraft in orbit, such as when the capsule approaches the space station and when it backs away from the outpost during the undocking process. The capsule's reaction control thrusters are also used to guide it into the proper position before a different set of engines gets fired to begin the journey out of orbit. The in-orbit Starliner test came weeks after work on the ground using a test engine at NASA's White Sands Test Facility in New Mexico. Teams subjected that engine and thrusters, which were developed for future Starliner flights, to conditions similar to those that the capsule experienced on its way to the space station. Engineers also replicated conditions that Starliner will experience as it undocks and prepares to re-enter the atmosphere. In the coming days, NASA and Boeing officials will assess data from all the tests to date and may conduct a formal review to discuss when to bring the capsule and its astronaut crew back home. NASA has not set a target landing date for the mission, but said there are opportunities throughout August. Initially, NASA had set a 45-day time limit for Wilmore and Williams to stay at the space station because of constraints with the Starliner's capsule batteries. However, agency officials said this month that the batteries were being recharged while the spacecraft was docked, thus lowering the risk of extending the capsule's time in orbit. With this mission, Boeing was hoping to prove that its Starliner capsule could safely ferry astronauts to and from the International Space Station, a key step before NASA can authorize the company to conduct routine flights to the orbiting outpost. Rival company SpaceX has been transporting NASA astronauts since 2020. Starliner's first uncrewed test flight in 2019 also encountered problems and was cut short after software glitches prevented the capsule from attempting to dock at the space station. Subsequent fuel valve issues caused several delays before the vehicle succeeded in docking at the space station without a crew in 2022. Then, in the spring, the NASA astronauts' launch was delayed twice before they finally lifted off. Wilmore and Williams' lengthy stay on the space station makes the orbiting outpost more crowded, but mission managers have said that there are enough supplies and resources aboard to accommodate them. As they await their return to Earth, Williams and Wilmore have been conducting science experiments and assisting with various space station duties alongside the seven crew members, four NASA astronauts and three Russian cosmonauts, 
who were already stationed there. This is a tough business that we're in, Wilmore said this month in a news briefing from the space station. Human spaceflight's not easy in any regime, and there have been multiple issues with any spacecraft that's ever been designed, and that's just the nature of what we do. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.